We'll start this. Hello, welcome to the Container Network Interface Status Clarification and Update Session. I think this might end early, and I think that's good because there's free drinks after this presentation. So I am uh, Mike Zappa. I am the software engineer at Microsoft and the Azure Container Networking Team. In the open source community, I'm mostly involved in the networking space, CNI, ContainerD, and one of the SIG Network uh, co-chairs. My background is mainly network systems and software engineering, so the networking space really just comes natural to me. And outside, I'm a rock climber and trail runner, so if you want to get a, a climb or a run in, hit me up after this. And I'm Lino. I'm working at Ericsson as a software engineer and have been in around networking for around four years, mostly working on network semi mesh before and now shifting towards uh, CNI and multi-network and, and learn all the Kubernetes networking environment and ecosystem. And um, yeah, I'm into baking, so I made a nice strawberry pie and some macaron or so if you want. So. Right on. <laughs> so the agenda for the session will be, we're just gonna uh, introducing the new maintainers, a CNI overview in Flow, the CNI 1.0 or uh, 1X updates and some of the clarification, and you know the future of the CNI and DRA, DRA and how to get involved. I really do hope to iron out a couple areas of the confusion that have come up rather consistently as well. So first things first, I want to congratulate our new maintainers. Our first one is right next to me, uh, Lionel with Ericsson, has been involved with several efforts and put together excellent diagrams, POCs for, for multi-network, DRA, and across SIG network, and has done several caps. Our second uh, maintainer, Tomo with Red Hat, who actively participates in the Network Plumbing Working Group, as well as, the, which is the group that maintains Multis. I want to give a big shout out to uh, Tomo because he joins our meetings at 1 a.m. his time. So hats off to him for that dedication. And it's actually kind of fun to have Tomo in the meeting because you can always just kind of hear him, you know, like pouring his tea or whatever he's drinking over the mic. So you always just kind of know his presence. Our, uh, a third uh, new maintainer is Ben Leggett, is with Solo and works in the service mesh Istio side, has recently contributed some really helpful features to the CNI. And obviously, this could be you next KubeCon in Europe. So I just want to quickly go over the CNI from a very high level as it's a as it's, this is a really short session. So CNI is what makes container networking possible in Kubernetes and across the ecosystem. The CNI is what is responsible for establishing connectivity between the host and the isolation domain. In Linux, this is the network namespace. It could be a virtual machine as well. We don't actually specify the technology involved here. It's currently implemented in the container runtimes, container D, cryo, and I actually think HashiCorp implemented it directly in Nomad as a part of their CNI support. They actually use GoCNI, uh, which is maintained by the container D maintainers, but this isn't HashiCon, so we're not gonna speak about HashiCorp anymore. The CNI is actually uh, orchestrator agnostic. It's not coupled to any specific runtime, uh, or I mean, uh, any specific runtime or orchestrator. So however, a lot of the CNI plugins have found themselves coupled to Kubernetes, Kubernetes because they actually do call on the Kube API. The CNI was actually started back in 2015 at CoreOS, now Red Hat, and it's a specification that defines the inputs and outputs for CNI plugins, and it defines the responsibility for the network setup, network cleanup, IP allocation and deallocation. The inputs and outputs are in the form of JSON and variables passed into the CNI binary itself via standard in and standard out. The commands we uh, currently define are add, delete, uh, check, version, GC, and status. And to reduce some confusion here, is I think a lot of people start to get wrapped up of what the CNI actually is, or you know, it's really just a specification, but really what's actually being executed is just an executable, and it can be written in any language, like Golang, Bash, 
I had ChatGTP write one in Perl and Fortran earlier just for fun, so thanks for Doug for giving me that idea that you can use generative AI to write obscure CNI plugins. And sorry for the uh, quick crash course. I can usually do the CNI presentation in about an hour or two, but it's been condensed into a single slide. So I'm sorry if that was your expectation. Oh, next slide. That just scrolled down. Cool. So let's just talk about the CNI flow from a high level to iron out a few areas of confusion. Well, this is not a CNI construct. I want to mention that the pod only has one network namespace and not a network namespace for each container. So what that actually means, if you make a change to the network namespace, all containers will see that change. If you add in a uh, net dev, all containers will see that. Uh, this has been a pretty consistent uh, area of confusion. And so hopefully, we all know, know that there is one network namespace. In regards to the CRY uh, RPCs, and for those that don't actually know what the CRY is, CRY stands for Container Runtime Interface. It's the glue between uh, the kubelet and the container runtime. It's the code that executes the CNI uh, all across the container runtime. I want to quickly go through the RPCs that are involved with the CNI. And the first you can actually see is the run pod sandbox. And this all happens after the pod has been binded to the node. So we actually see that the order of operations here is the network namespace is created and then the CNI is at, uh, sub, uh, command add is executed. And it's actually, so not involved with create or start containers. So the CNI add happens before that. And the, se the second RPC that's involved is a stop pod sandbox, which calls a Dell command. And that's actually what is responsible for the teardown. And there's two other ones that are actually involved, the status and the pod sandbox status, but we're gonna clarify those in the next couple of slides. So some of the new verbs here, let's just talk about the 1x updates. The latest specification change has two new verbs, status and GC, garbage collect. And status is a way for the runtime to determine plugin readiness. And you can think about it as a way to say, hey, am I ready to call add? This means if the node actually has allocatable IP addresses. And the current approach that we have isn't super great. Unfortunately, we use the presence of a uh, CNI network configuration to drive readiness. So clouds will not place the CNI configuration if their network's not ready. So we actually now have status to do that. So you can actually say, hey, I actually have allocatable IP addresses rather than going into a persistent crash loop that never en uh, ends. So this, uh, the second verb is GC and GC was introduced as a way to clean up resources that are stale. The easiest example is IPAM uh, uh, deallocation. In some cases, the uh, pod could crash and continually allocate IP addresses. And that eventually will result in you know, IP address you know, exhaustion. And now you have a much bigger problem on your hand because the node no longer can schedule IP addresses. So GC is a means to help reclaim those IP addresses. It also can be used for IP tables rules, EPBF programs, and more. We're actually looking for people to in, uh, implement uh, GC in the container runtime, so please see me afterwards. In uh, regards to actually status, status has uh, been implemented in the OCI CNI package for uh, Cryo, and it's currently in flight for Go CNI on the container D side. So right now, neither of the container runtimes actually have the status uh, verb implemented, and so we're working to get that completed. Another feature that was added 
uh, to libc9 was the configuration subdirectories, and this was added by Ben at Solo. And the reasoning behind this was the primary, C, like as an example, the primary CLI, uh, CNI, such as uh, Celium, would lay down the CNI configuration file, and then the service mesh would need to edit it. And now you have a problem with race conditions, or now your configuration file is no longer valid. So now you can actually use a kind of system D and its style configuration system, which reduces the need for you to actually edit the primary CNI configuration. So loop back, everybody's favorite CNI plugin. So a lot of us uh, container D users actually found out that you need the loopback plugin regardless if you're using it or not. As of C, uh, container D2.0, it's actually a configurable flag to remove this dependency, aka you can just say, I don't need the loop pack plugin anymore. And eventually this will become the default. And this was kind of a request that a lot of people were just pulling down the community uh, CNI plugins just for loop pack for container D. And as a note, uh, Cryo has a needed loopback plugin for some time. I don't know how long that has been the case for. I'm sure everybody's kubectl had applied Celium, Calico, Flannel, whatever you used, and then just to find out that you don't have a loopback plugin. So we can make that a thing of the past. So, and the last item is that our community plugins are finally built with uh, GitHub CI now, so thanks Tomo for getting that done and helping speed up our rollups. It was a source of uh, slowness on our side. So let's clarify CNI status and who actually calls it. Uh, many people have confused the status verb and thinks it's the pod status, which is part of the pod sandbox status cry RPC. So we have that up here. So the pod sandbox status is related to the pod sandbox. It's not node scoped and it's mainly used during the pod creation. It's also called miscellaneous times through the pod life cycle by the kubelet. And if you've actually ever wondered how the uh, Kubernetes gets the IP address of the pod, it's the IP from ETH0's uh, net dev in the pod network namespace. This is the RPC that is responsible. It's actually the only piece of information related to the CNI result that ends up in the Kubernetes world. So just the pod IP address. You can actually see that Lionel has injected some Ericsson information in here. That's the OUI for Ericsson, which I think is kind of funny that he snuck that goose egg in here. So status. The status cry RPC is what actually is what is responsible for driving the network and runtime readiness, and clearly a better option for executing the CNI status command. The Kuba is, uh, calls a cry a status RPC every five seconds, that's non-configurable. If the CNI plugin is missing or returns an error, that actually sets the network uh, condition to false resulting in the node not being ready or being able to schedule new, uh, new pods. Uh, so effectively, if you were to kubectl get nodes and you see not ready, that means status has failed or the plugins are completely missing. Sweet, so now to discuss the future of the CNI. And the CNI does have some sharp edges that we really want to get uh, ironed out, you know, across from the configuration files, the versioning, Mike Brown right there can talk to you all day about all the versioning fun that him and I have had, you know, the execution model and the lack of support around nodes, the routing table in question, especially around delegated IPAM and which we only really focus on the pod network namespace. So a few areas that we're currently exploring are is a gRPC to replace the execution model. And right now we're really uh, very much in the requirements gathering and POC phases. In fact, the KNI effort, Kubernetes network interface effort, re did reveal a lot of challenges that we would face here. And so, We've kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, we can't, you know, 
so use a single RPC, obviously, just to stand up the network. Uh, because there's loading, there's a primary CNI, and then there's also how do we support the service meshes. So adopting gRPC is also really driven by the need to support DRA, drivers better, and it was requested that we remove the execution model. And some of the early POCs actually showed some benefits where the uh, container runtime could communicate directly with the network daemon, such as faster cluster and node provisioning times, almost by 80%, you know, shaving off half the time required to uh, start up pods, which is really good. So we're gonna hopefully continue down this path. And the, actually, the, like, the backstory, I think, to the execution model and how it came to be, I wish Casey was here, he'd really uh, uh, nail this one, is that, that I believe actually GRBC and the CNI were kind of coming out at the same exact time, uh, CNI 2015, GRBC 2016, which I think the idea is that there is a Go issue where the Go routine could actually jump out of the network namespace and cause some various errors. So I think that has since been uh, patched and no longer an issue. So, but the execution model at the time actually bypassed that problem. And another area that is that we need to be able to support is the service meshes better. In the current, they don't like, actually don't create interfaces like CLM and Calico would, they actually do work after the primary net dev creation, which we don't natively support with them. They are actually a construct use, uh, using chaining, which we're hoping to support them with a first class RPC in the future. And the big piece of the puzzle here is, and I think this may be popular or unpopular, is, you know, that we may need to look at, you know, Kubernetes objects as a means of driving uh, the CNI configuration or other uh, resources, because I think the conceptual problem here is Kubernetes doesn't know about CNI, and CNI doesn't know about Kubernetes. So, and I won't talk about uh, DRA because I, uh, Lionel will be uh, taking that next. So the last piece of the puzzle really here is that, you know, the biggest news that we want to say is that we're in the early phases of discussing moving the CNI and the Network Plumbing Working Group as an official SIG network subproject. And we recognize that these groups have like a very special relationship with Kubernetes. Without the CNI, you're probably not provisioning a cluster. It'd be very tough right now. So, and a lot of them are, as, uh, you know, those members were unable to attend the summits or actually be formally recognized for a lot of their work. Uh, so we hope to change that. And right now the groups are heavily siloed. We aim to make this more horizontal rather than this vertical approach that we currently have and create a better way of organizing and taking on larger event, I mean, uh, efforts. Cool. I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Lionel now, and he's gonna talk to you about the work he's been doing. Yeah, thank you. So the idea to mix together CNI and the array is to me very exciting. Multus is currently the standard way to attach multiple network interfaces in your pod in Kubernetes. But it faces some challenges and limitations due to the lack of integration, as Mike highlighted, with the Kubernetes API. This new project, CNI DR Driver, aims to provide similar functionalities uh, with enhanced features as Multus, by, but by leveraging DRA, we could provide all these new features. For example, scheduling will be available, uh, a, di a direct integration with the Kubernetes API will be provided with structure fields, so no more JSON uh, format uh, CNI config uh, in, a, in a third party object, uh, no more annotation to claim this, this uh, network interfaces. Um, uh, the validation could also be implemented, uh, as well as the standard, uh, a standard way to return the, the status of this network interfaces. So we will have a, 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 an API as part of Kubernetes where we can return more information, such as the interface name, the IP addresses, the MAC address. We can have uh, condition fields to, to state the readiness of these interfaces. And this could, can be particularly useful 
if we want to have, for example, services, but also if we want to do troubleshooting. So th this project um, will provide us some insight also about how to integrate with the uh, multi-network to the um, to the core uh, Kubernetes networking concepts such as uh, uh, gateway API services, but also network policies. Um, so, what do you get? Next slide. You broke it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Okay, cool. Back Thanks. Action. <laughs> so to achieve this goal and this project, uh, some improvement in DRS, ENI, and also the underlying API uh, will be required, for example, in NRI. Um, so in, in DRA, uh, we have the scheduling that provides uh, uh, um, the, the, the functionality for certain types of devices, especially about, uh, for example, now GPUs. But what about the network devices and, and network interfaces that we, that we are injecting in the container and in the pod in uh, using CNI? So for example, Mac VLAN, VXLAN, VLAN interfaces needs to be taken into account. Um, in this example shown in this picture, in this slide, uh, we have uh, a pod that requests a VLAN uh, with the VLAN ID uh, 2000 uh, based on the interface ETH1. So we need to make, to make sure first that the ETH1 exists on the node, and we need to make sure also that the, um, the, 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 no, the, the, v, the VLAN ID uh, 2000 based on ETH1 is available on this node. So the scheduler uh, must be uh, aware of this requirement and, and of the network. Um, some other, field, other things must be investigated. For instance, the advanced network uh, devices and technologies like SROV, DPDK, RGMA, etc. So this uh, might or not uh, be part of this project, and it's one of the experiments that we need to do uh, with this CNIDR driver, and we'll figure out if this uh, fits into this project. Validation can also be added, so we can validate the configuration of these network interfaces uh, and we can validate that the user is not creating a CNI config that doesn't make sense and that will never be, that will never be able to, that the CNI runtime will never be able to execute. For example, here, if the user creates uh, a CNI config for the VLAN with a VLAN ID uh, 20,000, then the, the execution of this uh, CNI config will never be possible. Um, can you how do you? Okay. Um, and yeah, as I said, because this VLAN ID uh, 20,000 will never work since the VLAN ID must be between 0 and 4,095. And other features um, might be, um, uh, other fe features might also need different types of improvements. So, for example, if the in place pod resource update, uh, which is the ability to, up to update the CPU and memory, uh, in a pod in Kubernetes is become something is becoming something in DRA, then we might want to support CNI update verbs. For now, we have the verb uh, add and delete that that would work for adding or deleting an interface on uh, during the pod runtime. But in that case, if we want to have update, we might want to uh, to to improve CNI to support this. Um, downward API might also uh, uh, might also need to be uh, to be available to align with the Kubernetes features. Um, for example, the primary uh, default network provides this feature, so we can from the, the the pod and from the container we can retrieve what are the IPs configured in this pod. So with the multi-network uh, world, we might need also this feature, and this is an improvement in, uh, in the array. And if we are using underlying API, for example, uh, NRI, we might need some uh, pod adjustment to support the pod, uh, pod status pod IPs, so we can replace the execution model for the, um, the, the default network. So NRI. Yeah, 
NRI is a, a, container, fe uh, a container feature that has been uh, introduced now by default uh, enable and is enabled by default in uh, ContainerD 2.0. Uh, it allows us to hook into some container and pod lifecycle events, such as uh, the, the pod run sandbox. So when the pod is created, we can call the CNI at that time, and we can, uh, we can call multiple CNI at that time. So this could also replace the current execution model with the, the, the CNI call that is only one CNI call to the default uh, uh, CNI that is configured on the node. Uh, and this would be an improvement for the, the pod of life cycle. It could, as I said, adjust the pod. It could, uh, if we support like in place pod resource update, it could update the, the pod. So we don't have to, to stick into the current execution model with the, the, the current CNI, the, the current only CNI call. Um, to compare with uh, uh, what uh, Motus is doing now and to compare with, with what we are working on. So on the, on the left, we have the uh, network attachment definition, which is the third-party object that Motus is using to store or to hold the CNI configuration. And to attach to this uh, CNI config, or to use this CNI configuration and to attach to the secondary networks, the pods needs to refer via an annotation in, in the pod's uh, annotation uh, to this network attachment definition. And it comes with some uh, 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 runtime configuration, for example, the interface name. So to replace this model in the array, uh, we could use the resource claim, which is now a Kubernetes object that can, where we can request uh, some devices. So for example, network interfaces, and we can we can request these devices together with their configuration. So we can store in this uh, opaque parameter the CNI config and the, and the, the runtime configuration. To refer to this uh, uh, and to attach the pod to these resources and these devices, we, we, are, we have now um, a field in the pod spec called resource, resource claim that refer to this, um, um, to this resource claim. Uh, something that I forgot to mention is that now about the configuration is that now we have this opaque parameter that uses this runtime run row extension where we can store any type of data. So it is the way that we get rid of the CNI config in the JSON format. Now we, we have a struct field. Uh, and this is uh, a small improvement, but it's, I think, something that we uh, were complaining about the network attachment definition. On the status part, Multus was providing this, the status in a similar API, again, in the annotation. So we had a, a JSON uh, annotation where we were storing a list uh, of, of network interfaces where we could retrieve the interface name, the IP addresses, the MAC address, etc. cetera. In, using GRA, we have now, as part of Kubernetes 1.32, uh, the feature has been like merged last week and is behind, will be behind the feature gate as part of 1.32 is this status of the devices. So we have a list of devices that have been configured in your pod where we can return the interface name, we can return the MAC address, we can return the IP addresses. We have a condition field where we can return the, uh, the readiness of this network interfaces. Uh, we also have this data, which is another opaque field where we have the uh, uh, runtime extension uh, uh, type where we can, for example, store this uh, 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 CNI result. Sweet. I think this is our last slide. So yeah, if you want to get involved, we do have a weekly meeting uh, Mondays at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I put the link to our meeting notes. A lot of people actually don't know that we have this weekly meeting, so uh, hopefully uh, people here can start joining. We always need help uh, with PRs. Our PRs usually consist of a lot of mostly Golang, that uh, libc and I am, all of our community plugins are all written in Go. So if you also want to dive into Netlink, Netfilter, TC, really you name it, uh, we'll probably have it in some of our community plugins. 
Uh, if you want to have new proposals, new verbs, like we said, you know, update, init, de-init, there's plenty of new things that we can add into this, especially from the uh, CNI and the container runtime perspective. So if you have any questions, just uh, come talk to me after this uh, uh, presentation, and I would love to hear it. And, oh, thank you. Thanks. Do we have any questions? Yes. There's a microphone here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm already hard of hearing. I'm using you guys as a lazy web because I could probably go look this up. But um, uh, so status and GC in cryo, where is that? Where does it have GC yet? No, so GC is not implemented in any of the container runtimes and okay. status is only implemented in the OCI CNI package. It's not been moved into Cryo itself. And from Go CNI, it's currently being, I actually started it, and then someone from Google is going to finish it. And then it'll be added into the container runtime. So I'm not certain of the versions yet. But Cryo, I don't think it's been uh, pulled in yet. OK, I will also take a look there because I am very interested I I'm very interested in status but I um, I'm a um, maintainer of whereabouts IPAM CNI and cleanup is a big deal um, in the IPAM world so um, at least in my implementations we use cryo so I want to do some some follow-up there and see how that can be improved. But I realize this stuff is kind of hot off the press, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it hasn't been implemented yet. But yeah, from the whereabouts uh, a CNI plugin, yeah, we should sync on that, because I think it probably has a great amount of use cases for both status and GC. Totally. Um, awesome. Well, great presentation, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks, Doug. Thanks. Hello. Uh, my organization uses a tool called Samplicator to replicate our NetFlow, basically, to take the overhead off of our networking devices to actually replicate that NetFlow. And the way it works is by spoofing the source IP. So we're working on bringing that into Kubernetes, but the major roadblock we're hitting is that source IP spoof. So do you know of a mechanism within CNI to enable something like that, or is that a feature that's going to come in the future? That would probably be implementation specific. I know certain network plugins do support that, like a sticky or some sort of uh, functionality. I'm not 100% certain. I'd, I'd love to follow up with you, though, if you want to hang, up, uh, hang around. And I can gather some of your use cases, and I can see how we can potentially support you with the current. And if it's not, let's kind of make a path forward. For sure. Thank you. Definitely. Thanks. Hello. Oh, hey, Will. Hey. Um, so CNI is often used as kind of a hook point to set up things that are not really related to you know, Vs or network namespaces or anything. And NRI now seems to provide another hook point where those could potentially go. Um, do you see that being kind of the place to put things that need to do network setup outside of CNI moving forward, or is the story more complicated? I don't know. Lionel, you want to take it? I mean, there's a lot of debate around NRI. Like, Mike Brown and I have talked about NRI. I think, what do you think? Right. I think, yeah, NRI, I mean, if CNI don't cover use, use case, you can completely replace it and then use this hook to do more things and, and then fulfill your use cases. I mean, CNI is good because it's already there. It's already an API that many people, people know. And if you want to migrate from, for example, Multus to the CNI DR driver, it will be easy. But I agree that we cannot fulfill all the use cases. But NRI, yeah, could, could become something bigger than, than this. That makes sense. Thanks. That's good. Thanks. Cool. Any more? It looks like the queue has been exhausted. All right, well, enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy the free beer, and I think in about in an hour.
Thank you.